So in the previous lecture, we had uh, used the following two exercises. So one, let's show that the real line is homeomorphic to the interval 0, 1. So let's see how to do this. Uh, I just want to sketch a quick proof. So we will give a homeomorphism from the real line to minus 1, 1. And you can easily check that using a linear isomorphism that the interval minus 1, 1 is homeomorphic to 0, 1, to the interval 0, 1. Okay. So let's give a map from R to minus 1, 1. So we simply send x to x divided by mod x plus 1. Okay. And easy to check. This is bijective and continuous. Right? And the inverse of this map is given by minus 1, 1 to R uh, y maps to y upon 1 minus 1, 1. Right? And this is also continuous. So, the remain, uh, so to check that these are bijective and continuous, both these maps, that is left as an exercise. This is one exercise. The other exercise I had uh, mentioned was, so we take let x and y be topological spaces. Fix a point small x and x. And consider the inclusion from y to x cross y given by y maps to x comma y. Okay. So, uh, clearly this factor is like this. So, i and let us call this f naught, let us call this map f. Yeah. So, then F naught is a homeomorphism. Yeah, obviously, x cross y has the subspace topology. From x cross y. So let's quickly check this. Uh, so f is f is continuous. as both the projections are continuous. So recall we had seen that to give a map to a product, uh, it is enough to give a continuous map to a product, it is enough to give continuous maps to each of the factors and both the factors, the first factor is just the constant map y to x that is obviously continuous and the second factor is the identity. So both these are continuous. and since the image lands in in x not in x cross y it follows that f not is continuous right here we are using the following exercise so let's say not exercise the result which we had proved uh, when we uh, talked about the subspace topology, suppose A to B we have continuous map F and let us say the image lands inside a subset C of B and then this F factors as F naught. So if we give C the subspace topology, then this map F naught from A to C is continuous. Uh, so, F naught is bijective is clear. It's clear. So, therefore, to show that F naught is a homeomorphism is a homeomorphism, it is enough to show that 
f naught of v is open for an open v in y right but f naught of v is exactly equal to x cross v and this is equal to x cross v this open set intersected with x cross y this subspace right thus f naught of v is open which implies f naught is a homeomorphism okay so this completes uh, both the exercises which were mentioned in the previous lecture so now let's proceed with our discussion on compactness so last time we proved that a closed subspace of a compact space is compact okay so this time let us begin today's lecture with the following proposition Let X be a topological space and let Y contained in X be a subspace which is compact. Right. So uh, here Y is a subspace of X and therefore it inherits the subspace topology and this topological space is compact that is our assumption with the subspace topology so then our claim is then y is closed in x okay so let us prove this so we shall show that the set x minus y is open in So once again let us make a picture, let us say this is our x and say this is our y. So let us pick up any point x over here. So let x be in x minus y, it is a point outside y. So we need to show that there is a small neighborhood of, there is a small open set, set around x which does not meet y. right? So, uh, we choose any y in y, right? so let us say this is y, uh, then as x is host of, uh, so as I had mentioned, it is uh, from now on we will always be assuming that our topological space is a host of if not mentioned. As x is host of, there exist open sets u y containing x and v y containing y. So this is our u y, and this is our v y, such that u y intersection v y is empty. Right. So we can do this. So, we can do this for all y in y, right. So, then the sets v sub y form an open cover for y. So, that is we can write y as, so y is contained So y is contained in this union y in y v sub y. Yeah. So uh, this implies that y is equal to union y in y, y intersection v sub y. And since this is an open cover, this has a finite subcover, so this is equal to union i equal to 1 to n uh, y intersection v sub y i. right 
So, this implies that y is actually contained in the union of finitely many of these p sub y r. Okay. So, now let u be equal to the intersection i equal to 1 to n u sub y r. Now, each of these u sub y's is contained x. So, therefore, this implies that and there is a finite intersection. So, this implies that u is an open subset of x and x is in u. Okay. Uh, so, we claim that. So, let us look at u intersected with the union of y i's i equal to 1 to n b y i's. Uh, this is contained in the union i equal to 1 to n u intersected v sub y i's which is contained in the union i equal to 1 to n u is contained in u sub y i u sub y i intersected v sub y i but each of these is empty so this is equal to empty right so this implies that u intersected this union is empty this implies that u intersected y which is contained in u intersected this union v sub y i as we saw that y is contained in this union is equal to empty right. So, thus given given this point x in x minus y, we have found an open set u contained in x, open in x such that x belongs to u and u is contained in x minus y. Thus, x minus y is open. So, this completes the proof of the proposition. So, as a result of this proposition, using this proposition, we will use, we will prove this very useful theorem uh, let y contained in R n be a subspace, then y is compact if and only if y is closed and bounded. So, I have not defined what bounded means, but it means uh, the obvious. So, let y contain an R n be a subspace. We say that y is bounded if there exists some m positive such that y is contained in the ball of radius m around the origin. Let us say in the Euclidean in the Euclidean metric. Okay. So, let us prove this theorem. Uh, so, let us first assume that y is compact, right. So, then, so we can write y, so then y, so first note that R n we can write as the union n greater than equal to 1 balls of open balls of radius n. So, this is an open cover for R n because every point is contained in one of these balls open balls right. 
these keep getting larger and larger. Right. So, this implies that y is equal to I can we simply intersect both sides with y, y intersect with b0, b0m. This is an open cover for y. Uh, right, and since y is compact, this has a finite subcover. Right, but uh, these balls are contained. So b zero one is containing b zero two is containing b zero three and so on. So this implies that there exists some n such that y is contained in b0 thus y is bounded right uh, because of this pre previous proposition this previous proposition says that rn is a hostov topological space and we have y which is compact so y is also closed right so the previous proposition implies that y is closed. Okay. So, thus y is closed and bounded. Okay. So, this proves one direction. So, conversely assume that y is closed and bounded. So, since y is bounded, uh, we can find a m large very large such that y is contained in this product of these intervals, right. So, y is bounded means y is contained in some large open ball and this open ball we can put inside some inside a square like this inside a closed square. Okay. So, or y is this thing. Okay. So, moreover uh, so note that uh, so we proved that 0 1 is compact as 0 1 is homeomorphic to we can just in fact even write a linear homeomorphism uh, this implies minus m comma m is compact this implies minus m comma m to the m is compact right so as y is closed in rn this implies y is also closed in in this subset right and by what we proved in the previous class previous lecture uh, we proved that closed subspace of a compact space is compact yeah so using that right so as closed subspace of a compact space is compact, this implies y is compact. Right. So, this completes the proof of the theorem. So, as an application of this theorem, let us prove that S O n is compact. So, recall, so as an application, right. So, recall S O n or the same proof for O n will work. S O n is 
the set of those matrices A with real entries such that A transpose A is equal to identity, n cross n identity. So uh, claim S O N. This has the subspace topology from M N R, right? And M N R we can identify with R N square, right? Uh, so is compact. So our claim is that S O N is compact. Yeah. So it suffices to show. that S O N is closed and bounded. Okay. So let us look at this map. So let us first show that S O N is closed. So let us consider the map from M N R to, to M N R cross R. So this map is given by A gets mapped to A transpose A comma determinant of A. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the determinant condition. Okay. So, uh, we claim that this map is continuous. So, to show that it is continuous, it is enough to show that first we look at the map from MNR to MNR, A goes to A transpose A, this map is continuous and the map from MNR to R, A goes to determinant of A. So, this map is continuous is clear because uh, the determinant of A is a polynomial in the entries of A and we know that polynomial, the, uh, the entries of A are simply the projection maps and projection maps are continuous from this product and polynomials, therefore polynomials in these continuous maps are continuous. Uh, Let us look at this map over here. So once again M and R is uh, identified with R n square with the product topology. Right. So, to say that this map is continuous, it is enough to say that each of the coordinate functions is continuous. But once again, when we look at A transpose A, the coordinate functions are polynomials in the entries of A. Yeah. So, thus, a goes to A transpose A is continuous. Right? So this shows that phi is continuous. Right? So now uh, the point uh, identity n cross n comma one in M N R cross R is a closed subspace, is a closed subset. Uh, in fact, uh, in any uh, Rm, the a point, so we can just take any point, a point. A1, A2, up to AM is this, just the single set is a closed subspace. Okay. So, this implies that phi inverse of this identity n cross n comma 1 is a closed subspace. But this is precisely is precisely S O N. Okay. 
Uh, so therefore, S1 is closed. And next, let's see that S1 is bounded. Uh, so this is easy because when we look at the condition A transpose A is equal to identity. Uh, so if A is the matrix A11, A12, and so on, A21, right? So then A transpose A is equal to identity. So this will imply that right. So when we look at the i ith entry of A transpose A, this is equal to summation j equal to one to n a j i square. Okay. And since this A transpose A is identity, this sum has to be equal to 1. Right. And when we take sum over all i's, this implies summation i comma j A i j square is equal to n right. for every A in S1. Right. So thus, S O n is bounded. Right. I mean, the topology on Rn square is given by this Euclidean metric, and what we have just proved is that uh, every element A is contained in the ball uh, around zero of radius square root n. Okay, I can add a square root n plus one. Okay. Uh, okay. So we will uh, end this lecture here. Mm -hmm.